Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am Mariah, and I'm a second year graduate student in the Library Science Program. Today, we are going to introduce you to Leanne Ney, Digital Engagement Librarian and developer of the IU Libraries Mini Maker Space, who will walk us through the art of block printing. But first, I'd like to showcase some additional open resources related to fine arts, making and crafting available from the comfort of your homes. The first site I'd like to show you is the U.S. General Service Administration's Fine Arts um, site. They have a variety of galleries that you can look through. Um, two of the galleries I'd like to point out are the Arts and Federal Courthouses. Um, it gives a little background about the art and the federal houses here. And then these are the different um, displays that you can see from various courthouses in the United States. And then the next one is at the horizon, Art for the U.S. Border. It also offers a little background and then you can click through the various uh, galleries that are um, there. The next resource that I'd like to tell you about is the Library of Congress's paper and book art section. Um, on here, you can find different activities to do that include paper arts for you or your children to do together, and then various book art making techniques that you and your children could also do together. Um, one that I'd like to highlight is how to make paper. Um, so from here, they give you both visual and descriptive instructions on how to make the paper. And then the next one is bookmaking crafts for kids and it just shows you various ways that you can make different books. So like a traditional flip book or like a fold-in book. And then you just follow the um, diagram as your instructions. Um, the next resource I'd like to tell you about is this um, website from U.S. Small Businesses Administration. It's how to start a crafting business. So, like, if you have a hobby that you're into and you want to, like, make money from it, this site gives you some tips on what you will um, need to know and be prepared for when you start your business. So, like, knowing your customers, um, having a good brand name, developing a strategy, and having good photography and making sure you're sharing your story about why you're doing this. The next um, resource I'd like to tell you about is from the Indiana government website. It's the Indiana Arts Commission. Um, from this website, you can do, they offer training and conferences and webinars all about um, the arts. And then lastly, the resource I want to tell you about is the Sage Historic Costume Collection. And the Sage Collection at Indiana University, which includes clothing, accessories, and related items from the past, as well as the present, our social history comes to life. Overseen by a School of Art, Architecture, and Design, the collection serves as a resource for students, professionals, and the public. Oh, also, all the above resources can be found on our resource guide called From the Comfort of Your Home. Let me open that. So this is the resource guide um, 
pals under IU Libraries, and it just has various um, resources for arts and culture that you can look at. So here's the one for arts and crafts. Now I will hand things off to Leanne Ney. Leanne Ney is the Digital Engagement Librarian for the IU Libraries. She earned her MLS from IU in 2014 and has a background in art and film production. She manages the Mini Makerspace, a creative outlet for students in the Wells Library. The Makerspace offers introductory workshops and provides access to equipment to help students learn new skills, express their creativity, and de-stress. Hi, thanks for joining me. My name's Leanne, and today I'm going to show you a technique called object printing. Essentially what we're doing is taking everyday household objects and using them like stamps. But instead of using an ink pad, we're going to use acrylic paint. So we'll take the objects and use them to create an interesting design on a tote bag. Here's an example of what I'm going to show you in this video. I created a series of diagonal stripes and then used different objects to create patterns within those stripes. Now, you don't have to create a bag like this, but hopefully this tutorial will spark some ideas for you. I highly recommend wearing an apron or clothes that you don't mind getting paint on. All right, now let's get started. First, let's take a look at the contents of the kit you picked up from your library. We've got acrylic paint, foam brushes, clothespins, buttons, and sheets of foam. I also rounded up some other materials that I thought would make an interesting pattern. I grabbed some Q-tips, an old dish brush, and a garlic press. I also recommend grabbing some scrap pieces of cardboard. I'm going to put one inside my tote bag so the paint doesn't soak through to the other side, and I'm going to use the other piece as a palette for my paint. Now, if you're following along with my stripe design, you'll also need some tape, and painter's tape or masking tape works best. Before you start printing, it's a good idea to sketch out your design or lay out some of your objects to get an idea of what you're going for. You might even want to test print some of your objects on a scrap piece of paper or cardboard beforehand. For my tote bag, I know that I want to make some diagonal stripes, so I'm going to go ahead and start taping them out. Now I'm ready to start painting. So first I'm going to grab a Q-tip and I'm going to use it to create a polka dot pattern in the lower corner of my tote bag. Next up is the clothespin, and for this one I'm going to use one of the foam brushes to paint one side, and then I'm just going to stamp it in a straight line onto the canvas. Now we're moving into the center stripe of my tote bag, and I'm going to use my dish brush and get a little paint on the edges, and then drag it across the canvas and all of the bristles make this kind of cool stripe texture. Now I'm going to use another one of the household objects that I rounded up, which is a garlic press. Uh, so this inside piece is made of stainless steel and it didn't really hold the paint very well, uh, but it does make this interesting spotted pattern. For my next stripe, I used the foam to make my own stamp. I started by cutting out two small IE tridents, and then I glued them together onto one square piece of foam. Uh, and you can use hot glue for this, or any type of craft glue will work. I'm going to follow a similar process to make one of my buttons into a stamp. 
And this mostly just prevents you from getting paint all over your hands and it makes it a little easier to create your pattern. Now I'm gonna let the paint dry, remove the masking tape, and there you have it. I've got my own custom printed tote bag. Thanks for following along. We would love to see the designs that you've come up with, so please share them on social media and tag your local library and the IU Center for Rural Engagement. I also hope that you'll come visit us in Bloomington at the Wells Library Mini Makerspace or attend one of our free Maker Mondays workshops. Hope to see you soon.